When I was younger, I dated a girl who I really liked. Now, I know you're probably thinking that every tragic story or criminal confession starts off this way, right? Well, hang tight. So we dated for a while and everything was good until one day something unexpected happened. Suddenly, the way she treated me started to shift. She started getting increasingly mean and started getting super critical of me without any apparent explanation. So I immediately started questioning myself. I wondered, what was it? What did I do? Did I forget something important like a birthday or an anniversary? But nothing seemed to check out. I remember asking her what was bothering her and she just said nothing, which we all know is womanese for, oh, it's definitely something. But the more I pressed her, the more irritated she got, so I just left it alone. And the next day I treaded with caution, thinking that she must have just been in a bad mood and that it would eventually pass. But contrary to my expectations, she started getting more and more critical of me, despite my efforts of trying to be patient and nice. As the same thing continued to happen the next day, I couldn't help but start to feel like she was increasingly trying to build a case that I was the sole source of all of the problems in her life. The part that was so strange was how this seemingly happened overnight. It was like one day she just woke up and forgot all about my decent traits and could only remember my absolute worst traits. For the next few days, she became harder and harder to get a hold of, and when I did talk to her, she was cold and short. So after a few more days of this and during one of her seemingly random blowups at me, she finally blurted out that there was a new guy at her job who she started becoming great friends with as of late. Coincidental? I think not. So that was obviously the end of that, but it didn't just stop with me. Come to realize this sort of thing doesn't just happen to charming, regularly handsome with the physical physique of Rambo and freakishly smart black men like me, but it's also quite common. And that's when something became clear and obvious to me. When you want to leave your significant other for someone else, you might feel terrible if you know that the person that you want to leave is a pretty good person who's nice, respectful, good to you, and loves you beyond belief. If you leave them simply because you're attracted to someone else, you'll probably start to feel like the bad guy. So subconsciously, you might start trying to find faults in them so that way you can make them look like the bad guy. Once you do this, then you feel morally justified in rejecting them and leaving them. Once that's all said and done, then you can tell others and yourself how bad they were to you and that you did the right thing by leaving them. After all, it's a lot easier to feel morally justified in leaving someone who is a terrible person. The truth is, none of us want to see ourselves as being bad people, so we subconsciously tell ourselves it's better them being the bad guy than one of us. So we can call this the breakup rule. Now hold that thought, we're going to come back to it. I'm actually somewhat new to the whole religion on YouTube thing. I didn't watch that much YouTube until I started my channel about a year and a half ago. My first exposure to these logical debates and discussions about religion was in college when I took my first class in philosophy of religion at a local community college. In the class, we studied the arguments and the objections to God's existence by the leading thinkers on the subject in the world. When I moved over to YouTube, I quickly realized that this was a whole new ball game. Because I wanted to know what I was getting into, I checked out the largest Christian-focused channels that I could find and also the largest atheist-focused channels that I could find. Fine. When it came to the Christianity focused channels, I realized that they were mainly just focused on worship or some sort of positive or encouraging messages. But this wasn't the same case for the atheist channels. With the largest atheist focused channels, there were two things that immediately stood out to me. They would either use a whole lot of ridicule or they would use a lot of emotionally charged appeals to how religious people or God himself are morally repulsive. But in both of these cases, they were hardly ever presented as arguments in and of themselves. So I knew the reason had to be emotional rather than logical. Then I considered why they seemed to be two of the leading driving factors that played such a big role in their viewership. The obvious answer was that it made people feel strong feelings, but what were these feelings and why not other feelings? Now, I can't do an exhaustive analysis on all of the reasons why, as I think there really are plenty, but here I just want to offer one, the breakup rule. It's no secret that creating strong feelings in people are emotionally powerful when it comes to getting people's attention. The question that we want to entertain here is that, is it possible that the breakup rule is a reason for the surge of people talking about God being so mean? Well, here's why I think it's a real possibility. For those who believe that God doesn't exist, then they're in a different position than the religious believer. In principle, if God does exist, a religious believer could have a true encounter with God and then be reasonably certain that God exists because God revealed himself to that person. But the atheist doesn't share a counterpart to that. They couldn't, in principle, have a similar degree of certainty that God does not exist. But if you're going to reject God, but at the same time you can't be certain that he doesn't exist, that could be a little unnerving. So what's one thing that can make you feel better about your decision? Well, how we talked about with the breakup principle in relationships, the person will throw negative feelings onto the other significant other in order to feel better about their decision. In a similar way, hearing about how bad religious people are or how bad the God of the Bible is would also make atheists feel better about their decision and in a very strong way. 
They eventually come to believe that even if God exists, they have a higher moral ground than God and consider moral judgment over God. You'll notice that people put such an emphasis on God flooding the world or LGBTQ rights or that they think that the Bible condones slavery or God just being mean and awful. Just as the girl in my example needed to feel morally superior to me in order to help her feel more at ease for rejecting me and leaving me, the same emotional reaction would allow several atheists to feel better about their decision to reject and leave their past life of when they believed in God. The reaction could come out with something like, even if he did exist, I still wouldn't worship him and they would undoubtedly minimize all of the passages on God's love and mercy and magnify anything that they think that could show that God is bad and worthy of hate if he did exist. Just like the girl would try to minimize anything that she thought was my good traits and then she would maximize anything that she thought was my bad traits. I also think that this is part of the reason why so many atheists are now moving towards objective morality rather than the standard view that morals are just illusory. If you have objective morality, it sure does make it a lot easier to say that religious people are bad and so is God. Now I know that this video can easily be taken the wrong way by a lot of people, so I want to be clear. Firstly, this video has nothing to do with the truth or the falsity of religious belief or the lack of belief. What we're talking about in this video is not an argument if God exists or not, but instead I just want to raise psychological questions, so it's strictly psychological. Now what you're probably thinking is something like, well, you could be wrong about the other gods. But again, don't miss the point here. This point is about psychology, not truth. Now I don't want to give off the impression that everything I said today explains everything in the psychology of an atheist. It definitely doesn't. I actually think that there's probably a number of factors that go into this, but this is just an interesting suggestion that I was spinning around in my head. Whether or not you believe it, it's really up to you. Just go ahead and leave your thoughts about it down below. And one more thing I should say is that I really hope that this video does not cause people to become paranoid. Please don't take from this video that if your significant other is being mean to you, they're probably cheating on you. Again, there could be a million different explanations, so please don't hold me accountable if you decide to ruin your relationship. Instead, just talk to them. And maybe the next time that you find out that someone's trying to pull the breakup rule on you, what are you gonna say?